today we're heading to Black Canyon of the Gunnison uh, National Park in Colorado. So anytime we're checking out a national park, pretty cool. We had a question in our comments about gas motorhomes, fifth wheels, trailers, concerns about not being able to carry enough weight to travel full time. And that is definitely a valid concern. I, I highly encourage, I mean, I'm not just trying to promote this, but before you buy an RV, do your homework, take my course, take somebody else's course, read your books, because it's a lot cheaper to pay 20, 30, 50, 100 bucks, maybe even a couple hundred bucks doing your research than to spend five, 10, 15, $20,000 on an RV that can't carry the stuff for your family and you're basically back at square one. Nothing else, know this one thing, you've got to look at the cargo carrying capacity of the RV that you're wanting to buy. And in most motorhomes, it's a yellow sticker typically. It's gonna be behind the driver's seat in a motorhome. Combined weight of occupants and cargo should never exceed 4,264 pounds. We looked at several gas motorhomes. We bought this one, it was on a 26,000 pound chassis, and that's how it gets away with over 4,000 pounds of cargo capacity in a gas motorhome. Most of your gas motorhomes, you've really got to check if they're on a uh, 22, 24,000 pound car, uh, chassis, um, you know, that's not going to be that high typically. It's going to be anywhere from 2,000 to 3,500 pounds, especially if you've got a family. If you're buying a fifth wheel, a trailer, a motorhome, whatever, and you see that cargo carrying capacity is under 2,000 pounds, it's gonna be tight if you plan on boondocking at all. Just our water on this RV, if it's full, is 708 pounds. I mean, immediately, if it's 2,000 pounds, you're down to 1,300 pounds right away. That's not propane, that's not your stuff, that's not anything else. Uh, you get overweight, you get into all kinds of problems with braking, you get into problems with the tires blowing out. Uh, it's, it's, it's a safety concern, it really is. Um, so you, you wanna try to stay under that mark as far as cargo capacity. Hey buddy. Would you like any information? I uh, think we got a map. Is that all we need? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Wow. It's mountain. Yeah, you see the canyon? There's a trail running right there that says campground. I bet that is an awesome view. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. This is just the first stop. <laughs> As we've gotten farther away from Denver and Colorado Springs, and it's now the off season, all the kids are back in school, the crowds have definitely gotten better. This is more what we used to and what we enjoy as far as checking places out. Fruit and a sandwich. Show me how you dance. for you. This national park is huge. <laughs> right now we're at the south rim. To go from the south rim to the north rim, they said it takes two to two and a half hours to do that. We're thinking today since we got a little bit later start and I goofed, I've only got a quarter tank of gas, which Marissa's let me hear about quite a bit. Um, <laughs> we're gonna do a short hike here. And then we also wanna check out that river down there. Uh, we're gonna drive down to it. It's a 20, 30 minute drive down. And we have heard that it's a pretty steep grade to get down to that thing. Two, three. Woo! <laughs> so we're going on the Oak Flat Loop over here to my right. Uh, it's like a two mile hike, right? Yep, you're the ranger, you're supposed yeah, to Yeah, yeah, it's two miles. It's over here to my right. I can't really use my hands, so it's hard to, you know, it's over there.
everywhere we go, there's like a sign for the campground. <laughs> See a snake, Hensley. Keeps it on. You want to see another snake? I don't. Small one? She just wants to see a small one. Oh, okay. Well, where there's a small one, there's probably a mama. <laughs> An angry mama. They're more scared of you than you are of them, Rissa. I don't know if that's true. Hensley, look. Look, he's just hanging out. Hey, buddy. Pretty cool spot. He's not afraid. Uh-oh. <laughs> She's got crackers in that bag. Kinsley, he is going to get your crackers. <laughs> Go. Put it in your mouth. See deer, which I could not catch on camera. Snake, which I'm pretty sure I missed as well. I definitely got that squirrel though. <laughs> We're about to take East Portal Road. If you're over 22 feet, you're not even allowed to get on the road. It's got hairpin turns, 16% grades, not six, 16% grade, <laughs> grades going down, but it takes you down to the bottom to that river we saw earlier, the Gunnison River. So we're hoping it's worth the uh, wear and tear on our brakes and uh, <laughs> the hairpin turns and everything else. There's no RV we've looked at so far that we could have taken on this ride. <laughs> it is so amazing out here. You hear nothing but the rushing water behind you, just the beautiful mountains, the clouds. I mean, and there's this hottie right over here. Camping, fishing, have really cool picnic spots. So, should have picnic down there. I ate a pack of crackers, does that count? So, we did try to stay out here with our RV, and there was only one side available uh, when we looked. It didn't have any electric, water, sewer, no hookups at all, and you're not allowed to use your generator out here. So we just didn't think for us that was going to work. We needed, we need to at least be able to power our devices, um, you know, once a day to recharge them. But it did get us thinking a little bit about solar, because, you know, that would give us the flexibility of this type of situation where if there's no generator usage, we could at least use the solar to power our devices. I had a good day today. Just seeing that campground over at the National Park and knowing, I think if we'd had solar, we'd been there. <laughs> it was tough. <laughs> I don't know, I guess you just look for ways to gain versatility as you go. Uh, we thought about solar, we're thinking about it. I know there's ways to use solar without doing a permanent hookup as well. I don't know, I kinda like to just go all out, but maybe, you know, there's a possibility. Might buy just a couple of panels, hook them up to the batteries or something like that, I don't know. Just kinda shows you that you just learn a lot as you go through this journey mm -hmm. and that everything doesn't have to be perfect and you don't have to have everything like that you want like you can get things along the way and you know don't wait to do this until everything just perfectly aligns. I think she's right I think the theme of RVing is just 
man, just get out there and go for it. Um, that's kind of what we've done. We don't have a clue what we're doing. We still don't have a clue what we're doing a lot of days. <laughs> we're still figuring stuff out. Mm-hmm. We learn something new every single day. We literally learn something new. And because um, the unexpected happens. And that's part of the journey. Yeah, it is. I think that's what's fun is it's exciting, but it's challenging. And it's, it's pushing us to learn more and do more. Um, it's just been a good experience all around. Yeah, so that's that's a big part of it, just doing what you can, what you got, and then laughing at yourself if it doesn't go like you think <laughs> exactly. it will, because it probably won't go like you think it will. I think it's kind of a skill we've acquired along the way. So it is it is something that you can pick up. Don't think, well, that's not my personality. I can't do that. Sometimes it's, it's good to be pushed a little bit. Really? Call it a night, and we'll see you guys later. Another day in the books. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow somewhere the same see you guys later that's all folks this is terrible this it is we need a sign off this is very difficult signature sign yes. off maybe we should ask them What's your, yeah <laughs> oh man it's an editing nightmare um <laughs> another great day so we're gonna call it a night <laughs> that's good we'll call it